Welcome back to another Shout in Electronics. Our next patient that we got on the workbench is this three channel DMX controlled relay from a lighting system. Basically, when a DMX system like a console or a computer sends a signal along this line that I've just pushed in on the input side here, if the signal's got the right channel number and the right levels, then it turns on these three relays. Now, this input is this DMX input is only supposed to accept a maximum of about 12 volts according to the 485 standard or EI whatever but there was a problem and it ended up getting 230 volts AC injected into here so that is not good for the for the units okay let's just check one or two things before we go ahead here I have already noticed that those two resistors are open circuit those two 471 resistors 47 ohm resistors okay so I've noticed that those two resistors are open circuit over there but let's just prove trust but verify let's go a bit more out okay so you're going to see on the scope screen as I probe the input from the computer that's sending the DMX signal and if you can see on the so sco scope on the so as you can see on the screen there our peak voltage is, once I hold it steady, okay, we've had a peak of about 6 volts there, okay, let's zoom in so you can see that there, I did just freeze it, so there we've had a peak of 6 volts, which is now not telling me about any more, okay, but trust me, that's 6 volts, and that's a nice signal has got a bit of ripple and things like that but that's not too much of a hassle let's run this again and let's check on this RS485 driver chip here which is the 75176BP okay so let's zoom out now we should see a similar square wave with our probe on pin 7 and 8 which is the input pins and as you can see, I've got something disgusting. Yeah, what is that? Okay, so first thing I need to do is swap out those resistors. Okay, and then we will see if we're getting input to this chip, and we will take it from there. And I'm going to be using just a normal soldering iron to pull out those resistors and replace them. the DMX line. I'll leave the 12 volts supply connected because it is off. Okay, so now let's just freshen your tea, Governor. Okay. Tweezers galore. Okay, so let's Just heat both sides and that resistor comes right off and then I grab it with my fingers. Heat both sides. Okay, so those resistors are nicely off. Just do some housekeeping. Just because it's always nice to have things look nice and neat and clean. Okay, so we just clean the pads there. Okay, now I'm going to put a tiny bit of fresh solder. To each other's pads, okay, and now to take my nice little surface mount resistors out of their little housing here. These are smaller ones, they're so small they just run away like that. Okay, so. They are smaller, but I don't think it's actually carrying any major current because it's just a, a signaling line. Just hope I'll be able to solder it in place. Okay.
I'll just try. Take that one side, that looks good. Take the other resistor in, that looks good. Give it a few seconds. Okay. This is a lot less painful than I thought it would be. Okay. Take that there, that looks good. Okay, so those two resistors are in. Okay. So let's go ahead, hook the DMX line back up, power on. Okay, now I've set the dip switches. Oh, look there, that's different. I'm getting a flashing light, which to me should mean it's getting a DMX signal. So let me unplug the DMX line. And it's on steady so it's actually looks good what do you think say we should try turn on the channel let's go that channel works that channel works that channel works so as you can see the lights come on the relays come on and my little leds are popped on here come on Okay, so basically on site, this is, hey, I can actually turn all three on. And I'll just drop my uh, DMX lines one wire off. Oh, shame. That's why it's not responding. So this board is controlling, in that auditorium that it is, that runs the fluorescent lights. Okay, because they aren't dimmable or anything, we just need a basic on-off control. So mains comes in to the one side of the board and the relay switch mains out. In what's wired up in connection with the normal switches, so when this board's not controlling it, the normal switches will control this system. Okay, so there we go, we're flashing again. And let's just probe for fun. Okay, so remember what we saw on the input and output, let's bring our nice scope into the picture here. Okay, so let's show you. Let's probe the DMX input to the RS-485 chip, okay? So I'm going to probe that on pin 8 and 9 of the chip, okay? Okay, so there's that same input we saw. Very dirty, but that's probably just the way I'm probing it or something, okay? And now let's check the output. So we need to find a ground point. And I believe it's pin one. That's a bit high, so let's turn our scale down a bit. And pin one, this is the output of the RS485 driver. Okay, as you can see, that is peak to peak of 5.4 volts. And that's basically what goes into the microcontroller and tells it, okay, this is the signals that the computer is sending. The computer is continuously sending 255 different bytes. No, 512 bytes at a time. So when this one sees, okay, channel one is greater than 128 on its bytes or whatever, then it can turn on channel one. Channel two, if it's greater than 128 on the bytes, same thing and same thing. And then it just controls the relays. Okay. But now, because of the surge that this thing experienced, I don't really trust. And these chips are cheap as chips. So let's actually pull out the RS-485 driver while the board's running. Why not? Cheap as chips. I would rather put another brand new SN75176 chipping there just to give a chance of... A bit longer life, just in case that chip has suffered some damage and these worn outs are going to fail in future. And there we go, we got the flashing. Okay, so now it's picking up the DMX signal. I'm just going to move the scope out the way. Even though it is a very small scope, I have still got to expand my workbench. I'm going to put my laptop over here. 
using the Canvas software and dongle. Okay, so let's show you over here. Let's put this down here. So I'm doing just a head test. This is a full lighting control software. Okay, so I say head test. And as you can see, that first one is selected, so the first relay comes on. If I choose the next one, next relay comes on. And the third one, next relay comes on. So basically, this software controls everything from your moving lights, your colored lights, your static lights, and relay boards like this, smoke machines and everything. And it just continuously gives out that RS-485 stream. So, here's how I see this board. Got my prodding tool. Okay, so you get the DMX differential signal, RS-485 signal, comes in on this terminal block here, goes through these resistors into this 75176 transceiver, which then converts it to a 5 volt signal that goes into the microprocessor, which is a STC11F04E. If you want the whole code, it's 351DIP200. 1704NMH920JA. Okay, you've got a voltage regulator here. LM257, looks like it. A bit of passives here, coil some capacitors for that step down, um, step down regulator. And we've got our three opto isolators that then went, go and trigger the relays and the LEDs. And then yeah, basically it controls these relays, which are 10 amps at 250 volts AC, and then you have it running your output. So that is a basic system, but all the hard brain work is done inside the microcontroller. So that's got the firmware that tells it how to listen to the DMX signal, how to decode it, and what the different values do, like above 125 or above 128, it goes and turns on the channel, below 128, that channel's off. So that's all the brains in the microcontroller. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and click that little bell icon and you'll be notified whenever we get new content uploaded.